Hello. Last time we made this snippet of code and we ended by mm, simplifying it, by replacing addition and subtraction with incrementation and decrementation here. Now we can simplify it even further. The two instructions here can be replaced with just a single one. Loop. This is a specialized instruction. What it does is decrement the ECX register and as long as it is still not zero, then jump to this target. So this single instruction does exactly the same thing as these two instructions did for us. Except that this instruction always uses ECX register, while here we could choose any register. So let's try it. First loop, second loop, third loop, and we are done. Three characters have been converted. Now with specialized instructions like loop, we may have this problem that we need an ECX register to be used by this instruction and perhaps we also use this register for some other purposes. So we might need to preserve the value of this register so that when it is destroyed by the loop, we can, that we can restore it later. We can, for example, store the value of ECX in some other register and then restore it here. Or we could use some memory location to keep the value for us. But then we also need to ensure that this location is not used by anything else. And x86 has another mechanism for us that we can use to temporarily store values uh, without, without having to worry about uh, this being the place not used by anything else. We can just use the stack. We can store something on the stack with the push instruction. This is going to push the value of register ECX onto the stack and we can restore it later with pop. This is going to take off the stack you know, a single value and store it into this register. Let's see how it works. So now we push and you can see that we have the stack here and the value 3 is now on top of this stack of values. We now complete the loop and execute pop instruction. This value 3 has been taken off the stack, it is no longer here and it has been put into ECX register, restoring it to its original value. We can even store values of multiple registers this way. So let's see how this works. We just push two registers and then let's pop two registers. First push, we have now value 3 on the stack. Second push, we now have this address that is in EBX 
on top of the stack. We can use F4 key in the bagger to quickly skip over this entire loop and just come to this place. And let's see what the pop instruction does. The address that was on top of the stack is now in ECX. And another pop is going to put this number 3 into EBX. It should land here. Yes. So we restored the values, but we have them swapped now. What was in ECX is now in EBX. And boom, the address that was in EBX is now in ECX. So to restore the values to their original places, we need to do it in reverse. So the last thing that was stored on the stack needs to be the first that is restored from the stack because this is on the top of the stack. So let's do another try. Let's skip over the loop. And now there is one more thing that you may pay attention to. Each value on the stack does in fact have an address, just like any other value in memory. The address of the stack is in a register. This is the ESP register, stack pointer. E just means that this is a 32-bit variant of this register, 32-bit address of the stack. And the values farther down the stack have higher addresses. This means that when we push some new value on the stack, then this stack pointer is going to be decreased and when we pop value of the stack we take it from here put it into register and stack pointer is then increased by far because these are all 32 bit values so each one of them is four bytes so this is why the addresses differ by four This also means that what the push instruction does in fact is it subtracts 4 from ESP address and stores there the value of EBX register. This is a longer equivalent and what pop does is it restores value from the stack and then moves the address of the stack back for bytes up. Let's see if this is true and if it really does the same thing. First we just push free. Then we manually push this address onto the stack. And now we restore EBX register. And now we pop free from the stack. So yes, push and pop can be seen as just a simpler version of this operation.
And there is also one more important use of the stack. Let's get rid of this code. And let's make a subroutine. We can move. We can move this code into a subroutine. And here in loop call it. Call instruction is similar to jump, but before doing the jump, it also stores on the stack the address of the next instruction. In this case, it is going to store on the stack the address of this loop instruction. And then when we execute the subroutine, we can use return instruction red. And this instruction is going to pop value of the stack and use this value as the address where to jump to. So it is going to restore from the stack the value uh, that is the address of this instruction, so it is going to come back here. So we just call subroutine, execute some sequence of instructions and return here. Let's take a look. And here uh, comes the difference between F7 and F8 key in the bagger. If we use F8 here, we are just going to go to the loop and skip over entire call. And if we use F7, we are going to just enter into subroutine. So let's use F7. Now we have this address stored on the stack. Call instruction has put this address here. And this is the, the exact address of the loop instruction. So next instruction after the call, the instruction where we want to return after the call is finished. So continue and execute return. Return is going to take this value of stack and jump there. We are back here, the address is no longer on the stack. And we do this in loop. Now we entered the subroutine accidentally, because <laughs> we had no precautions here. After the loop is finished, this just continues executing instruction and starts executing this subroutine. So then this red instruction would return somewhere into operating system to some address that is stored on the stack. And when we want to terminate the program, and not just keep executing instructions farther and farther down. Then we need to call operating system. And this is going to be the next topic. As for now, thank you for watching.